G'day reefers, welcome to Gallery Aquatica TV. I'm Anya and we're here today to do an episode of The Frag Files. Today we're going to focus on leather corals and we've got three different genus of leather corals today. There's Cinularia, Lobophyton and Sarcophyton. Not only are we going to do multiple genus of leather, we're going to show you multiple ways of fragging them. So let's get started. So fragging leather corals is pretty easy. The most important tool we're going to use today is a nice pair of stainless steel scissors. However, there are multiple different options you have when it comes to mounting these leather corals. So we're going to cover quite a few of them today. I'll show you some of the stuff we've got ready for that. So we've got some real reef rock rubble. We had to use a hammer to get that ready. We've got our coral snips, just in case. Some pre-soaked frag plugs with the stems. Some larger pieces of rubble. We've got rubber bands and toothpicks. Our custom-made Recordia hospitals and morph hospitals. We've got some plastic trays pre-prepared with the smaller pieces of rubble. We've got glue on hand, reef dip. Also got a floater here, which we've just made out of a colander with some rubble, just to show you some options. And also, though we won't be using them today, just wanted to point out, you could use something like onion bag, zip ties, fishing line, or even some filter bags to do a very similar process that we're gonna to cover today. So we've got everything ready to go for our first coral that we're going to cut, which is the Sarcophyton. But first, let's prepare the dip. Today, we've chosen to use Reef Dip from Seachem. It's an iodine-based dip, which is actually made as a tincture I put five mil into two liters there. Now, the iodine does actually exhaust over time, so if you find the water going clear as you continue to use it, you can always start again, add more, or leave it as it is. We've got our bath bucket here, ready to go. And let's start with the first sucker fighting. Now, sarcophyton are actually called toadstool corals. We've got two here, and they've shrunk considerably since they were in the aquarium last night. And you can see why they're called toadstool corals, because they have that amazing shape that is similar to a mushroom. And this cap part is actually called the capitulum. And the best way to frag these is to get your scissors and actually cut a rim of the tissue all the way around, leaving the stalk on the rock to heal and regrow. So, I'll just move this out of the way. Got our very sharp scissors. I might just dip them in the iodine for a sec, disinfect. And so we take a cut just in here around the base now some of the time you'll be fragging leather corals will be actually underwater in the aquarium I really wanted to talk about the toxin that's released from leather corals because it's actually used in chemical warfare 
to prevent other corals around growing nearby. It's important for this reason to always use carbon in your tank or you can use resins such as Chemi Pure Blue to help uptake this toxin. So my main goal with the sarcophytes, and you can see how easy this is, I'm just making these little flat pieces into squares. This is actually a long polyp leather, which is very attractive for the purpose of making a couple extra frags. I'll just make some of these a bit smaller. And what's really interesting about leather corals and fragging is that you actually can't use coral glue. This tissue seems to really not adhere very well with coral glue. And so the methods we're gonna to cover today are all the different options that you have to get around that. So, Recordia Hospitals, we've got these fancy little containers and they really do solve the problem for us. We've got the tile that fits right in, a hole to pop it out once it's attached, and a see-through little viewing window. So we're gonna put some of these in here today, probably two, and it's about that easy. Two per container. If you had larger pieces, that's where this size would be more appropriate. Once the coral has adhered, which could take you know, one or two weeks, you can easily just pop that off, pop the frag plug out, and then cut the tile, and you've got two beautiful pieces of sarcophyton, safe and secure. We're onto the second sarcophyton leather here now, so I'm gonna repeat the method of cutting around the edge of the capitulum and these pieces we're going to pop into our basket of rubble which is going to be weighted down and we're just going to put it in our frag system um, in a low flow zone so they do appreciate the flow um, and you know within a, a week or two what we should see is a whole bunch of these beautiful new little corals. You can use shells or frag plugs, but we like to use the rubble because the rough surfaces really assist with the new coral making an attachment point. And so our last step is of course to use the iodine based dip. Not only will this remove parasites, but the iodine actually assists with soft corals in healing. So with this tray, it's a lot larger. We can't fit it in our bucket. So I'm just gonna use a pipette to pour the dip over the top. And I'll do the same with seawater. Just to ensure that we've washed it off before I place it here, ready to be put in our system. So next up, we have the Lobophyton leather coral. And this is often called a devil's hand. And you can certainly see why. You can see <laughs> the resemblance, right? Though I'm not certainly not the devil. But, <laughs> we'll put that in the water. And I'll start here. And I, with the Lobophyton, I like to just cut these fingers it does make it a little bit more interesting and easier to mount so again we're taking the cuts and you just make sure you take a real clean cut don't be doing hacking or sort of multiple snips just take one nice clean cut we've got some good size on these ones at the moment that should do just quickly put that in the dip, in the tub. I'll just leave these in this bath while I get the second one done. 
And so these are two different colors and they actually have different length of polyps, which is why I was really keen to do multiple individuals. You can see that slime coming off. And you know, these allelotoxins, as they're called, they're not just functioning in coral warfare. They're actually even there to ensure that things like turtles don't eat them, you know, um, and to prevent predation. Uh, so the more times we bath it, the better chance that we're not going to introduce that toxin into our system. There are only some genus of coral that are affected by it. Um, Scleractinians tend to be one of those, so you have to be super careful with your carbon uh, and replacing those kinds of medias if you're fragging your leather coral inside your tank. So, that's that. We have these toothpicks, now they've been soaking here, and this is actually where we're going to use a little bit of glue. I'm going to use these larger pieces of rubble. You have to get a little bit crafty here, and so what we're going to do is get the piece, just skewer it with the toothpick. I think in some nations these are called cocktail sticks. And then, because remember, we can't actually use the glue to adhere to the coral, we're gonna pop this in a spot where it's actually possible to use the glue to adhere the stick to the live rock. Just one more time, it's very, very easy. Just wanna make sure there's contact there. We'll just do a couple, so I'm sure you get the picture. Hmm. There we go. Gee, that's really quite sticky. <laughs> it's warning me off. <laughs> cool, so we'll do the four. Now, I like to use CG coral glue because it's so gelatinous. <laughs> oh dear. Clogs nib that. And so I'm just putting a little dollop of the coral glue on the edges of the toothpick to help hold it down. Another method for this, this is where you can use that onion bag or you could use fishing line and rubber bands. But we're going to use the rubber bands coming right up with the Simularia. There we go. Once you've got the glue in position, you just get a little bit of seawater and set it. And you can later also get some scissors and cut off those sharp ends. You only need the attachment to be relevant for, you know, a week or so before you'll find that the coral has actually attached and so as always we use the dip and they're ready to go. The other pieces of lobophyton we're going to actually put into this floating basket and like I mentioned earlier, you can use a range of different colanders. Today we're going to use this one. The rubble is pre-soaked, so it's very easy. Very, very easy. <laughs> I might actually just use my hands to dip that one. And I'm going to place the sarcophyton around the rubble. Maybe later I'll cut a couple more to make it take advantage of the space. 
use the pipette to pop over the coral dip. Give it a good wash and pop it into our system to float around. The next one we're going to cut is the Sinularia. Now, Sinularia, it, this actually expands to be quite a large piece of coral, but as all soft corals, they're kind of like a tissue balloon. And so this one has shrunk considerably, which will make it just that little bit more challenging to cut. Um, you know, so I'm just going to cut, take clean cuts of these branching finger-like extensions. Identify those. And again, we've got two colors. This one is more of a purple Sinularia with a hint of green. And the second one is a toxic green. A really nice contrast for people that are doing a soft coral aquarium. I love Sinularia because it's like you get that effect of having a branching coral without that necessity of calcium, carbonate, magnesium, monitoring and dosing. And so it's a, they're often used as a, a really good entrance level coral. Although, I'll just pop these here in the water while we get the other color. Although, one thing that people do need to know is soft coral really appreciates iodide dosing. Now, it's, a, it's an element that they tend to uptake very rapidly in an aquarium setting. And it's a little bit confusing because of the different forms of the element iodine, but let's take a few more cuts there, maybe that there. But I just briefly really wanted to touch on the difference between iodine which is an antibacterial dip I try and think of like betadine INE and iodide this is the non-toxic form this is often um, potassium iodide and this product is the one that's very important to dose into soft coral aquariums because the element is expanded very quickly um, and it will help with healing and sloughing and so that is a question we commonly receive you know my leather coral looks very waxy it's very unhappy this is a very normal process with all leather corals it occurs even weekly it's dependent on um, sediment that falls and to prevent algae growing on it you'll actually see this whole coating of waxy kind of like a skin just slough off and then suddenly the next day you've got the beautiful expansion of polyps again and the coral looks really healthy so whenever i have that question i will tend to suggest a dose of iodide into the aquarium um, just to help that coral you know obtain that maximum health and also increase the flow um, that also helps to actually physically remove that skin. So, where this, these ones are going to differ, we're going to mount these onto frag plugs with a stem using a rubber band and the toothpicks without coral glue. So, we take, <laughs> they're so slimy, the same system as before where we're putting that skewer right through the coral. I'll just leave that there for a second. <laughs> it's really fascinating how 
these different methods all contribute to us being able to share more aquacultured corals with our friends. Oi, oi. <laughs> They've shrunk so much. So now it's time for the rubber band. So this can get a little fiddly, but it's totally worthwhile. So you loop the rubber band once around the edge of the stick. Oh, once around the base of the frag plug. Doesn't need too much pressure because you don't want to split the coral. And then back around the stick. And that's, there you have it. A frag plug, a uh, city lorry frag without glue. You're just gonna put it in the iodine dip, in the bath, and on to the next one. So the last pieces of the Cinellaria, I'm gonna use our Recordia Hospitals. Now we say Recordia because of the larger size compared to the morphs. And if they hadn't shrunk down so much, I probably wouldn't have to use this system, but I really like to use these. So it's certainly gonna make it really easy. And then at a later date, we'll just pop out the tile and frag them. So thanks for joining me today as we showed you a whole range of methods to frag leather corals. I'm Anya, thanks for watching Gallery Aquatica TV and happy reefing! So that's our video for today. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, hit the subscribe as well. We'll be putting out videos every week showing a, a new tank with new products. There's gonna be lots in all the videos. I'm Cam the Fish Guy, and keep on reefing.